Well, she has been publicly feuding with Mr. Trump for years now, but this time Rosie O'Donnell might have taken it too far. The comedian tweeting this, I fully support imposing martial law, delaying the inauguration until Trump is cleared of all charges. Rosie also called the president-elect mentally ill and a liar. So nice, right, Rob? Mm -hmm. Very interesting. National Guard, but their leader is going to be out of a job the moment that President-elect Donald Trump raises his right hand. Well, the story blew up on social media this afternoon. With eight years under his belt as the commanding officer of D.C.'s National Guard, Major General Errol Schwartz brought experience and gravitas to the task of planning a successful inauguration. If something goes bad, it's up to the law enforcement agency to make the first move, if you will. But unlike in the years since George W. Bush first appointed him, General Schwartz will watch this inauguration conclude from home, stepping down as Donald Trump steps up to take the oath of office at noon. The timing is extremely unusual, General Schwartz told the Washington Post today, adding he would never plan to leave a mission in the middle of a battle. George Soros, front page story in the Wall Street Journal this morning that he lost a billion dollars trying to basically short sell a Trump victory. Yeah, I mean, he, along with some others like Mark Cuban, basically said if Trump wins, it's the end of the world. The market is going to sell off. Billionaire George Soros' fund manages about $30 billion for Soros and his family, but the progressive-leaning Soros took nearly a billion dollars in losses recently thanks to the stock market rally spurred by Donald Trump's surprise presidential election. President Obama is dishing out some advice to his successor, President-elect Donald Trump, but beware the irony. It was only then, after we had exhausted efforts for bipartisan uh, reform, that we uh, took some additional steps on, on immigration executive actions. So uh, my suggestion to the, uh, the President-elect is, you know, going through the... Uh, Legislative process is always better, in part because it's harder to undo. Well, advising Mr. Trump to go through the, quote, go through the legislative process sounds a little hypocritical considering you, Mr. President, have bypassed Congress by signing more than 200 executive orders using your pen and a phone. Concerns over the Iranian nuclear deal just took another hike amid reports that in his very last days in office, United States President Barack Obama just green-lighted a massive shipment of natural uranium from Russia to Iran. Washington said it's okay for Moscow to send the material in a barter deal to receive reaction coolant from Tehran. The United Nations Security Council still needs to approve the deal, but it's expected to do so because the 130 tons of Russian uranium is actually permitted by the 2015 Landmark Atomic Pact, and the international community is doing all that it can to keep the Islamic Republic committed to the deal.
They see the transfer as yet another last-minute jab from the Obama administration at incoming President Donald Trump, who would have likely vetoed this deal. Iran has already exceeded the cap set by the pact several times on its production of heavy water, which is used as a coolant in nuclear reactors. The ongoing production of heavy water is tantamount to Iran blackmailing the Obama administration, because if the violations were made public, Tehran would be accused of formal non-compliance, which could then endanger the fragile pact. Israel's government and others around the world have consistently denounced the nuclear pact as a complete failure. They charge that not only has Iran gotten away with refusing inspection of key sites, but it's also working to develop ballistic missiles. The U.S. Navy says the USS Mahan fired three warning shots toward Iranian ships Sunday in the Strait of Hormuz. Two Navy officials say the Mahan tried to communicate with the ships on the radio, but there was no response. The Navy destroyer fired flares, and the U.S. helicopter dropped smoke before the Mahan, the Mahan fired those shots. Now, the Navy says the Iranian vessels were 900 yards away from the American vessel. It sends a message uh, within our own country to our allies in Israel. It sends a message to the United Nations and the rest of the world. Uh, the, being in support of Israel, which uh, I believe is our nation's greatest ally, uh, has long been something of bipartisan support. Uh, as we saw with this resolution passing with over 100 Democrats in support of it, it sends a strong message that uh, what the Obama administration has done on its way out of the office at the UN Security Council is not one that does have the support uh, of Americans. Uh, and the speaker was right in his floor statement. What was passed at the Security Council uh, goes way beyond the issue of settlements. Uh, and it, for the first time ever, the UN Security Council is passing a resolution that declares this area of East Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria as illegally occupied territories. I am stunned. I am stunned at what happened last month. This government, our government, abandoned our ally Israel when she needed us the most. Do not be fooled. This UN Security Council resolution was not about settlements, and it certainly was not about peace. It was about one thing and one thing only. Israel's right to exist as a Jewish democratic state. These types of one-sided efforts are designed to isolate and delegitimize Israel. They do not advance peace, they make it more elusive. It is time to repair the damage done by this misguided hit job at the UN. It's time to rebuild our partnership with Israel and reaffirm our commitment to her security. Now, Syrian state television says that Israel has fired rockets at a major military airport in Syria, just west of the capital, Damascus. The army says several rockets were fired from northern Israel just after midnight. The airport in Syria is a major facility used by the elite Republican guards. A Syrian army commander is warning Tel Aviv there will be repercussions. has been focusing and keeping an eye on Hezbollah. It believes that Hezbollah has been strengthening during this conflict. It's believed that, it believes that Hezbollah has been using the conflict to amass more and more weapons. Uh, and so the focus uh, of the reported and the suspected Israeli strikes uh, appears to be this supply route or Hezbollah's main supply route between Damascus uh, and the Lebanese border. And so many of those uh, suspected airstrikes have been targeted, uh, targeting uh, some of those suppliers, but also uh, the military bases that it's believed that Hezbollah is gathering some of those weapons. And so Do you see a concern before January 20th at the Obama administration? We'll try to go one more time to the UN Security Council. I think we're all concerned that mm -hmm. this is an administration that is like a renter that is getting ready to vacate the apartment. Um, but before he does, he breaks every window pulls the plumbing out of the walls and punches holes in the ceiling just to leave it as big a mess as possible for the new tenant who's coming in. That's petulant and it's also um, 
beneath the dignity of the office of the presidency because presidents historically don't try to make major long-term policy shifts that will encumber future administrations. And how would you describe what you believe would be the relationship between the Trump administration and Israel? There will be a, um, a new level of candor and I think willingness to, to discuss issues honestly and both sides will feel that they're, they're looking after the best interest of their countries and of their allies.